Hi guys, I'm Jared Simcox. I hope you're super well. Thanks very much for joining me on the channel today. If you're new, kia ora, welcome. Thanks for joining me. If you've watched my videos before, thanks so much for coming back. Really appreciate the support and I hope you learned something today. Before we move on, quick disclaimer, I'm not a professional. I'm not sponsored by anyone. I'm just a passionate underwater photographer, diver and fish nerd. I like waffling on about it on the internet. Since we last spoke, I've been thinking about upgrading my camera system. Um, so I went on the internet and I started shopping around and I connected with a fellow diver down here in New Zealand who was selling this. It is an Olympus OM-1 Mark I. This is what goes in the housing. It is a nine-year-old micro four-thirds mirrorless system that produces a 16 megapixel image. So, if you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I'm a very passionate advocate for the Olympus TG series. And so you might reasonably ask yourself, why on earth would you upgrade by downgrading to a nine-year-old camera system? And what I'm hoping to do in this video is answer that question. And the question is, why would you move to an older, heavier, more complex camera system when there's such sophisticated technology available today at about the same price or less. So we're going to kick on, talk about this camera system, why I think it's been a great decision for me personally and why you might want to consider it for yourself. So the first answer to that question and the question I asked myself is, can I take similar or superior pictures to the ones that I am capturing using my TG camera by upgrading? And that was really, really important to me. So I suppose that's the first answer to that question is, is it worth it? Why would you upgrade to the solar camera system? And the reason the answer was yes for me comes down to flexibility. When Olympus made the EM1, what they were trying to do was take SLR technology and put it into a micro four thirds camera and they succeeded in that. What this camera allows me to do is manually control the aperture, shutter speed and ISO among other things that I couldn't do with the TG series. And that was really important because it unlocks creative opportunities that weren't available to me. The second thing is it opens up all sorts of lens selection for me. And the Olympus camera, the TG camera, should I say, is fantastic because there's a myriad of wet lenses that are available for it, which I've spoken about before. So when I moved to a new system, it was important to me that I was able to capture equal to or superior macro images, equal to or greater wide angle images, and equal to or greater um, fisheye images. And this camera, out of the box, the gentleman I purchased it from, had with it the housing and a selection of lenses and dome ports. So it meant that as soon as I received it, I was gonna be able to start taking pictures um, and framing pictures in a way that was already familiar to me. So out of the box, what I received was the camera and the housing, along with this lens here. It is an Olympus 12 to 40 millimeter kit lens with a zoom. So this here is not super wide angle, but allows me to capture wide angle images, which I'll show you in a little bit. It also came with this, one of the most sought after macro lenses or micro four thirds macro lenses on the market today. It's the Olympus 60, millim 60 millimeter macro lens. And I'll talk a little bit about that later on because it's pretty impressive. I very shortly after getting the system went out and bought this. It is an Olympus, uh, sorry, Panasonic, excuse me. Olympus also make one. It's a Panasonic Panasonic 8mm fisheye lens and it allows me to capture 180 degree wide angle fisheye images, which is pretty important if you're shooting very, very large objects very, very close. It also came with this. It is the port for the 60mm macro lens, an extension, a port extender, and what this allows me to do is put it on the existing ports that I have for the camera and take a slightly longer lens. It came with this, which is the dome port for the eight millimeter fisheye. And then on the front of the housing, 
is the dome port for the 12 to 40 millimeter zoom lens. Whoops. So, one of the big advantages was straight out of the box, I was going to be able to take pictures that were similar in nature, similar in framing, similar in size to the ones that I was taking on the Olympus TG6 series. That was really, really important to me. So the answer to our first question was, is it going to allow me to replicate the kind of images that I like taking on the TG series in an equal to or superior way? And the answer was yes. On top of that, I unlocked a huge amount of creative flexibility that I don't have on the TG series, and that was another compelling reason for me to move to the system. So, I've just recently been up to the Great Barrier Reef uh, in Queensland, North Queensland, Australia. Um, absolutely spectacular time to visit because, of course, we've had a few years with not so many people on the reef and it's recovered. Um, and I was really privileged to be able to take this for a bit of a test drive up there. So let's have a look at some images. And while we're looking at them, I'm going to talk about them because on that trip, I used the eight millimeter fisheye to capture some ultra, ultra, ultra wide angle images. And I used the 60 millimeter macro. And so we'll talk about how those pictures were taken and why I think this camera was the right choice to capture those images. So here we've got a photograph of some barracuda hanging out, getting a clean. Um, and this really demonstrates the advantage of having a really high quality sensor. Um, we've got an abundance of natural light. We're shooting in very clear water. There's an awful lot of, of movement um, and having control over the shutter speed has allowed me to freeze that image. Um, and it's also allowed me to um, enhance the blueness of, of the water um, without too much post-production. The strobes aren't doing too much work here um, because actually I got quite frustrated with this image um, because I wasn't able to get very close to those barracuda and fill the frame with a single object. So lens selection here worked against me. Um, I've got the 8mm fisheye on um, and what that meant is that for me to light that subject, for me to fill the frame with one, I had to get very, very close to it, which wasn't possible. But still really pleased with this image um, and this just highlights um, the considerable advantage of having a really high quality sensor. This was a super playful dive. Um, my buddy is out to my right. Um, he had his head under a rock photographing some macro stuff. Um, and this turtle just buzzed right up to me, was super playful, was really curious about the dome. Um, and of course, absolutely fantastic conditions. And it just posed for the camera. So very spoiled. Um, it's very, very, very close to me. Um, you've got to be quite careful with turtles because they have very sensitive eyes. So you need to dial down your strobe settings. And because it was so close to me, um, I was able to uh, light the subject while um, uh, taking full advantage of that sunball in the back. I've actually got another image which highlights just how close the turtle was, um, which is it actually had its flipper touching the dome port and it still fills the whole frame. So um, this is the advantage when you've got a larger subject that's very close to you, having that fisheye capability um, makes all of, or makes a world of difference, should I say. I'm really pleased with this photograph. I had a great time with this turtle. This is one of my favorite images from the whole trip, um, was at the deepest portion of my dive photographing this beautiful, colorful coral. Um, and as you can see, those three divers from another group, they just buzzed overhead. Uh, and I was quite close to that coral, um, as you can tell by how well lit it is. Again, that's the eight millimeter fisheye hard at work. Um, but because I am able to control my shutter speed, I can control the blue and I was able to create a silhouette of those three divers passing overhead. And I really like how they're about an equal distance apart from one another. They're all in really good trim. Um, it was just one of those really happy coincidences when color, light, and um, I suppose depth and distribution of subject um, all came together and I uh, was able to take this picture. So again, this is the advantage of having that ultra wide field of view as you can be super close, you can create good lighting while embracing your background. This wee blenny, super cool, was absolutely thrilled to take this photograph. Um, this is the 60 millimeter macro, hard at work. And one of the big advantages of this type of lens is you don't need to be right up in the face of your subject. You can shoot from a distance and still fill the frame. So you get these really interesting behaviors now and again, and you get a bit of creativity with your light. I have applied some vignetting around the edges with this to create some depth of field, but otherwise it's straight out of the camera. 
Finally, another super wide angle photograph. Um, the subject there is my very, very dear friend Nat. Um, and what I really enjoy about this picture is we've got this, I suppose, I see it as um, encompassing the spirit of kind of exploration, why we do what we do, you know, curiosity. And we've got this really healthy reef that Nat and I have been pootling along on, having a look for all sorts of wonderful critters. Um, it's really well lit from the bottom. And then we've got these free divers and snorkelers hanging out in the top right hand corner. And I think that it shows the separation of the deep and the underwater, the explorer and the diver, um, and then people um, familiarizing themselves with the ocean for the first time up there on the surface. And I really like this picture. Um, again, it's taken using the Panasonic 8mm fisheye lens. The strobes are working pretty hard for me there because we're lighting an awful lot of reefscape and then taking advantage of that gin clear water by controlling our shutter speed. Awesome. That was a really special trip. I've got quite good friends up there and um, for many years I'd avoided going to the Great Barrier Reef, even when I lived in Australia. Um, and the reason was, is I was absolutely certain um, I was going to be really disappointed by the experience. Um, and that was not the outcome at all. It was five days of just absolutely spectacular diving. So um, big shout out and, and thank you to my friends at Divers 10. If you do get a chance to go to Australia, I highly recommend you check them out. They're awesome. Um, now, one of the other questions I wanted to answer or needed to answer when considering uh, moving to a new camera system was what is my intent? What is it I'm going to use this camera, uh, camera for? Um, and what kind of photographer do I want to be? And going back to what I said at the beginning of this video, I'm not a professional, I'm not sponsored, I don't make money by taking underwater pictures. So I had to be really honest with myself and say I am a hobbyist. Um, I like taking pictures that I can print in my own home, that I can share online, share with friends and family as well. And what that means is that I don't need a very, very large sensor. I don't need a full frame camera yet. Um, but what I did want to do is have a succession path for my system over the coming years. And I'm very fond of the Micro Four Thirds system because it's small, it's light, it's mobile. Um, modern technology is extremely adaptable and flexible. And so by going down this path, over time, two parts of the kit will become redundant. The first will be the camera body, the second will be the housing. But the lenses will remain relevant and usable on a number of micro four thirds platforms as I go forward, and so too will the ports. So from a cost perspective, this is extremely important because if you go and search what one of these things costs new, you'll find they can be quite a large number. And by having these in my box already, it means that as I upgrade the body and as I upgrade the housing, I can take the lenses and I can take the ports with me. That was really, really important. Okay, so I also talked about flexibility and this camera does a few things that the point and square Olympus TG series isn't able to do or others like it for that matter, certainly not especially well. One of my favourite places to dive in New Zealand because I, I live in a place called Tekapo um, or Lake Takapo should I say. Um, it is a small alpine village very near the Southern Alps in the middle of the South Island of New Zealand. We are a long way from the ocean. We're an even longer way from warm ocean water. So my nearest dive... Actually, again, that's not quite true. Um, it's not my nearest dive site. My nearest dive site is the lake, which I do sometimes dive in. Um, except that we're at about 700 metres altitude here. So we've got to take that into consideration. It's real cold. Um, and... Unless there's a bit of snow melt around and um, the water level's high and there's kind of some cool petrified forest, there's not a whole heck of a lot to see there. There is ocean an hour and a half away, but there's no good reason to dive in it. Uh, Dunedin, uh, which is a little bit closer, it's about three hours away, three and a half hours away, actually also lovely diving. So what I should have said is Milford Sound, Piopiotahi, nearest favourite dive site. 
but there are dive sites close to here. So please don't let that put you off uh, visiting Aotearoa and going for a dive in the south. There's a place called Milford Sound, Pio Pio Tahi, which is in Southland, New Zealand. It is deep, it is dark, it is cold. But some of the images that you can capture there are absolutely spectacular. It is truly Jurassic. If you ever get a chance to go, um, highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, what makes Milford Sound unique is you have the Alps and the jungle, and as water comes down, so the, the, the snow melt and the glacier melt and the rainfall and it rains, I think it's six out of every eight days or something ridiculous. That fresh water comes down through the bushland, picks up all of the sediment and deposits it on top of the ocean. And so you have this brackish fresh water layer that sits on top of the ocean that blocks out an immense amount of natural light. So even if you're diving on a blue, 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 excuse me, we're going to leave that in because I was on a roll. Um, even if you are diving on a blue bird day, as soon as you're in the water and below that brackish layer, which at times can be up to 10 metres deep, um, it's very, very dark. So it's like doing a night dive. And so what I needed was a camera that was um, had a good enough sensor and good, good enough low light capability for me to capture images in that environment. And this camera allowed me to do that. I read a lot of reviews and the reviews said great low light capability. Um, and the lens selection as well was very, very, very sharp. Um, and it was going to allow me to take pictures in this cold, deep, dark environment. Um, I'll show you a picture of, of what it's like diving down there because you'll see that we have got a stage bottle on um, or a deco bottle on, should I say. Camera with this lens, the 12 to 40 uh, millimeter, um, a dry suit uh, manufactured by a company called Scuba Force and we're all hooded and gloved up. It's pretty brutal, um, but the appeal is um, in reasonably shallow water, they have these immense uh, black coral and they typically grow um, in very deep water um, and they're poached and they're extremely valuable and sought after for jewellery making in other parts of the world. And they grow at about a centimetre a year, so some of these corals are five or six metres across, meaning they're five or six hundred years old. So that's a, it's a really special place. It's a precious part of the world and it's a precious dive site. So it's a privilege to be able to, um, to dive there and take pictures. Um, the other appeal is uh, an, an immense um, diversity of, of marine life. Um, so there's lots of pelagics, there are um, seven gill, broad-nosed seven gill sharks there. There are lots of white sharks hanging around if you know where to look. Um, there are blind sharks, there are spiny dog sharks, um, there are seals, there are dolphins. In the winter there are whales um, and there's a myriad of macro life as well. So in one dive you really, really, really can um, photograph, spectate, observe and hang out with um, a, a really diverse range of subjects. So I absolutely adore diving down there for that reason. So this is us, uh, well this is me all geared up for a dive down to about 38 metres of salt water where these big black coral live. And behind that you can see my buddy Lance um, poking his, his head out. Um, these coral are very, very old, they're very, very large and absolutely glorious. And then we found this black coral here with this beautiful anemone all over it. So that's just on our way back up uh, finishing our deco. So I also want to talk about some of the limitations of moving to a system like this because it's not for everybody um, and it can get frustrating. Um, and a classic example is when I was in Cairns uh, on the Great Barrier Reef just recently, I had the 8mm uh, fisheye lens on uh, for all bar one dive and the reason is I am really passionate about photographing sharks and the good people um, on the dive boat after a while we're pretty comfortable with my buddy and I just pootling off and doing our own thing. So um, I went on a mission to find and photograph some large sharks and, and they are around but it's also the ocean and you can't predict it, we're not in control of what does and doesn't show up. So on all of these dives, uh, some of them were, were quite long, um, not once did I see a large shark close enough to photograph it. There were a couple of little white tip reef sharks that were hanging out as soon as we showed off, they poodled, uh, showed up, they poodled off. Um, and there was what I think was a gray reef shark uh, that came in and had a quick look during a drift dive, but it didn't stick around. I wasn't able to take a picture of it. Uh, and there was another shark that I just saw the tail of. I'm not quite sure what it was. It was a little bit larger. My gut instinct is it might've been a hammerhead, but I'm not certain. So, 
on each of these dives, I'm geared up to take big pictures of big stuff up close using my fisheye lens, and it didn't happen for me. My buddy, however, who was rocking a, um, a point-and-shoot system with a macro setup, spent every second minute finding something cool and tiny to take pictures of, and I missed out. And that's the advantage of the TG series, is if you're out shooting wide angle and you've got your uh, your ear lens or your fisheye lens on and you find something cool and it's macro, you can unscrew that wet lens and all of a sudden you're able to shoot macro. With the mirrorless system or anything similar to it, you're not able to do that. The lens that you put on the camera is the lens that you are stuck with for the duration of the dive. And that can be quite frustrating. Ironically, on the dive that I did switch to the 60 millimeter, 60 millimeter macro, there wasn't too much going on um, by way of macro. There was lots of beautiful reefscape. And the one shot that I did take didn't look like much. I kind of thought, Mah, this is a rubbish photograph. And it wasn't until I got on the airplane to fly back to New Zealand, I started looking through some of my images that I realized um, I'd actually kept, captured a spotted ras getting cleaned um, and that's a massive advantage of one of uh, a camera like this one is that actually you can crop that image right out and you can sharpen it especially if you're shooting in raw so you don't lose too much image quality and this was the fluke image that I captured using this camera using this lens um, on that one occasion it is the only one from the entire dive trip that was worth keeping. Cool. So in summary, is it worth moving to a much older, larger, complex, heavier camera system if you're an underwater photographer and if you are already on a point and squirt camera like the Olympus TG series? And I think the answer is yes, if you are seeking creative control and flexibility in your under and above water photography. And I suppose I've really only focused on its underwater capability, but this thing is fantastic to use above water as well. Um, I'm not as active as a, uh, as, as a I suppose, dry land photographer, but I like taking pictures every now and again of people and of nature, of wildlife. I've really enjoyed using the, uh, the macro lens for above water. I've, I've taken some pictures of bugs and that's kind of a nice way to spend a, an afternoon off if the weather's good is to go bug hunting and I'll put some pictures in while I talk about that. Um, so some of these pictures were taken just in my front yard um, here in the Alps, um, and I couldn't have done that with the Olympus, uh, with the TG series. So I was able to affordably, by buying older and secondhand, move to a more sophisticated system that allowed me greater uh, creative control and flexibility, um, in my underwater photograph taking. It also means that the images I'm capturing are slightly larger and they're of a much higher quality. So they're considerably more printable. And of course, when I go to edit them in Lightroom, I retain an awful lot more image quality. So for those reasons, I think it was absolutely the right choice for me. Um, and there is a pretty robust secondhand market out there. So if you go and watch my TG videos, um, I talk a lot about being pretty thrifty repairing stuff, making stuff, um, manipulating camera parts to um, to work in a way they perhaps weren't designed to. Um, and this was a great pathway for me to go from where I was to where I wanted to be. And I'm going to get a few years out of this and I'm going to really enjoy shooting with it. So that's all from me, folks. I hope that's been really helpful. If you've got questions, please drop them in the comments below. If you'd like to see some more pictures, follow me on Instagram. No bubbles, no troubles. As always, be safe, happy diving. Thanks for watching.